Let's talk about Raynaud's phenomenon because that's a related thing in which there is spasm in the artery. So let's look at the definition and we'll start with a case as we often do. Here's an 18-year-old man and he complains of severe pain in the tips of his fingers and toes, especially when dealing with cold materials. You'll notice that that's similar to what is seen also in the Burgers patients. He states that after working in the cold, he develops discoloration of his fingers, progressing from white to blue. And you can see that in the picture on the left and the right. And the, when he puts his hands in warm uh, water or warms them up, then uh, color is restored. Usually the fingertips are bright red for a while and then go back to normal color. Now, the definition of Raynaud's actually falls into three different forms of Raynaud's. Some people have Raynaud's as a disease in the, you see there in the middle uh, air, in the middle box. This actually, it, the reason for it is unknown. It occurs in some people where they are just born very sensitive to cold and they repeatedly get this symptom. And in fact, in Arizona where I live, I've seen a number of patients who have so-called primary Raynaud's and they've moved to Arizona because they couldn't stand living in the northern United States. When the cold weather came on, they were constantly in pain in their hands. On the other hand, you can see it as a phenomenon, a transient phenomenon um, that occurs often in the setting of systemic disease like systemic lupus erythematosus or rheumatoid arthritis. Any autoimmune disease can lead to some secondary occasional Raynaud's that's usually not quite so bad, although again, sometimes it can be so severe enough that people have to move to a warm climate. And um, finally, um, there is the syndrome, which occurs in people who know that a certain set of circumstances, for example, emotional stress, will bring on uh, Raynaud's. So the two on either side are secondary to another condition, whereas the primary one can occur uh, and can be inherited uh, and actually is not uh, a treatable. <clears throat> Let's talk about the pathogenesis. It's due to a vascular abnormality. The endothelium, remember that little tiny layer on the inside of the blood vessel? It produces a number of substances that keep the vessels dilated. And often in the setting of Raynaud's phenomena or disease, there's a deficiency of these vasodilating substances. One of the most common is called nitric oxide. When that happens, that there's a deficiency, the blood vessel can spasm and close down and cause the white area that you saw from lack of blood flow. And then when the hand warms, there's a redness as the blood rushes back into the area uh, where the vasospasm had occurred. Um, there are often abnormalities in the autonomic nervous system, as we talked about. Um, there's often repeated periods during stress where the noradrenaline or norepinephrine that's released at the nerve endings causes spasm of the blood vessels. And you can even have little clots forming because of the spasm and also there's increased activation of the clotting system. The platelets uh, can aggregate. Um, and with the production of increased platelet thromboxane, which is a a vasoconstricting compound, you can also make this worse. So there's a whole cascade of things that can happen, starting with a vascular abnormality, going on to a neural abnormality, and then eventually adding in with some floating substances in the bloodstream from the platelets that make things even worse. So the symptoms of Raynaud's occur when the patient handles something that's cold, for example, a cold bottle of beer or soda. Then ischemia develops due to the vasospasm. The skin turns pale or white on the fingertips and becomes cold and numb. Actually, after a while, because of decreased blood flow, the fingertips may even become blue, uh, so-called cyanotic, because the blood there has lost its oxygen. And then when the fingers are warmed, there's hyperemia or increased blood flow and the fingertips become red and often painful when the blood flow uh, returns and the fingers may even swell and throb and you may actually even have trouble feeling the tips of the fingertips. How is the diagnosis made and what is the therapy? 
Well, the diagnosis, first of all, you have to distinguish primary from secondary ray nodes. Patients undergo an extensive evaluation looking for arthritis or vasculitis, looking for rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, um, scleroderma, a whole variety of autoimmune diseases. When the patient is found not to have those, then they either have secondary um, ray nodes because they're very sensitive to cold, but they don't have any systemic disease, or they have the primary illness where even with just moderate exposure to cold, they may develop the ray nodes. And in that case, it's often an inherited thing. The family history will tell you, oh yes, my mother and grandmother had the same thing, but in the case of the disease, once people are in a warm climate, usually it's well controlled. Treatment, of course, abstinence from smoking, just like with Berger's disease, smoking can make the spasm worse, and avoidance of cold. And as I said, many of these people move to warmer climates. Vasodilating drugs can be helpful, calcium channel blockers and prazosin. Sometimes, particularly in the milder forms of secondary, patients may be able to stay in a cold climate wearing warm gloves and taking vasodilators. And a more aggressive approach is actually interrupting the sympathetic nerves. But these days, we usually don't do that. We're usually able to control it with vasodilator drugs and avoidance of cold.